Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on acquiring and downloading topography and terrain information from SketchUp, uploading into Rhino and converting this into editable terrain geometry that you can use within your building or landscape projects. Now we're going to start by acquiring our terrain data from SketchUp and SketchUp has a great feature on this geolocation tab under file where we can add a specific location to our SketchUp model and acquire some three-dimensional terrain data from that location. Now, I'm going to use this area here, just up in Scotland, because it's got some quite dramatic valley sort of location there. So we'll import that region in, just going import, and it will import as a static kind of flat 2D um, screen grab of the aerial view there. Now, in order to get the topography and terrain information onto this model, we can then go to File, Back to Geolocation, and click on Show Terrain, and it will give us a kind of rough estimate of the terrain on that location. What we can do with that now is we can now export that from SketchUp as a 3D model, and I usually do it as a DWG, and we can then import that into Rhino to start to use within our Rhino model. Now, go File, Import, Locate the Terrain, just import it in. Um, don't worry about these settings for now, we'll just import it in straight from there. Now because my SketchUp was working in metres and my Rhino is in millimetres, it's always important to kind of know your scales when you're bringing any models in. I'm going to start just by scaling this up by a thousand. Now my model is quite slow because there's quite a few facets there. And then I'm just going to go zoom selected to pull myself back out. So that's now at the correct scale. Um, you can always kind of draw a box near the object to test it, but we'll kind of work with that for now because I know that's correct scale. You have to kind of roughly know the scale of the area you want if you want to kind of check the size. Now, as you can see from this, it's a very sort of faceted mesh shape we've brought in here. And I want to convert this so it's much smoother and we can use it to create contour lines and create a kind of smoother terrain we can use within our project. So for this operation, I'm going to start by just exploding out the object. It comes in as a block instance, um, and to get it out of that into a kind of more editable form, we need to first explode the shape out, and you'll see we're then left with these small triangular meshes here, and these singular curves as well on the mesh. Now, what I'm going to do is we don't really need those curves, so I'm just going to go cell, select curve, just to select all the curves in the shape and delete those out and then we're going to convert the meshes into a more editable NURBS format which is Rhino's kind of native modeling format which we can then use to help us slice up the model and turn it into something a bit more usable so if we turn it select sorry and we go select mesh to select those kind of mesh triangles there and then we type in mesh to NURB and this function will convert these meshes into a NURBS or a kind of standard Rhino format there. And what happens is it makes a copy of that object as a NURBS object on top, so you'll get left with one surface and a mesh below it. So we can then go select mesh again, select all the extra mesh objects and delete those from the file. So we're just left with lots of these little poly surface or surface triangles. Now. What I'm going to do now is we're just going to select all of those and join them together. And with those now joined, we can now start to work out ways of sort of smoothing this and creating a simpler, smoother terrain object, which hasn't got lots of triangles and isn't made up of all these facets. Now to do this, I usually start by just creating a box across my geometry and just make it slightly bigger just so we can get an extent of the kind of scale and mass of the object. It's good actually when you're making this box, and I'll just do that again, to note the height you're making the box at just down here in your millimeter scale. So mine's coming in at around 40 or 400,000 sorry millimeters. So basically 400 meters tall and that gives me a good sense of kind of the size of this valley here which is quite a kind of steep valley 
we've got in our model there. The reason it's good to know that value is the next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be splitting this surface up into a series of contour lines which are going to give us a kind of contour line area to work with in our model. We're almost going backwards through the steps. We're actually creating contour lines from our mesh and then we're going to be remeshing those contour lines into a more usable surface. So if we select our surface here, we type in contour to use the contour function in Rhino. It asks for a base point and this we're going to use as the bottom of this kind of reference box we've made and then we want a direction perpendicular to the contour plane. Now we want the contours to go from bottom to top chopping kind of horizontally through our object to give us our contour lines. So we want our contour lines to be directed vertically up so they're going to be moving vertically up through the object. So I then select the next point on the top of the box there to give us our direction of our contour lines. The next point we need is our distance between our contours. Now I know my object is 400 meters tall so I want to split that I think into let's say into 20 meter um, contour lines the distance between each one because you don't want too many it might take quite a long time to kind of compute through them all so we'll do it 20,000 because we're in millimeters so 20,000 millimeters will be our contour line distance and that's the distance between each contour line in this object and if I hit enter it will then start chopping up my surface in each of those contour lines slowly building it up as it works through the mesh there and depending on the kind of density of the mesh you have or the surface you've made, this might be a longer or shorter process. Um, so there we go, that's made our contour lines there. And once those are made, we can just move our faceted surface out of the way there. If I zoom in on these, you can see that they're still quite jagged, but what we can do with them now is that we can use the patch tool to repatch a surface over the top of these contour lines. The patch tool effectively works as a way of kind of draping a surface over a series of lines you've set up at certain levels. So if we select our lines, type in patch, and then under the patch value, the kind of surface U and surface V spans will dictate how accurate this patch is. For this particular one, I'm going to go 30 by 30 for this and we'll see how it comes out and if it needs to be more accurate you can just up each of those values to give yourself a more accurate surface in there. Just hit OK and same again this might take a bit of time if you've got quite complicated geometry so I'll just let this load through and there you can see our surface is now complete. Um, don't worry too much about these excess edges you get on the surface we can get rid of those shortly but you just want to make sure that the surface is conforming to all the lines we've made and you see that that's pretty good we've got it kind of flowing through the majority of those lines there you'll notice that now it's a lot smoother we haven't got any of those jagged edges on there it's a lot going to be a lot easier to work with and a lot lighter in our model as well so we can actually use the box we've previously made to help us trim this down um, I'm just going to kind of position the box so it cuts through the model. It might be that it's not quite big enough, in which case, in this case it is, you can just extrude this top surface and I'm just going to extrude it so it cuts right through the center of my model. And once I know it cuts through we can select the box, use the trim tool and just trim off the outer edges there. With that then trimmed you'll then find that we've now got a much neater surface under our contour lines. From that point you can also extrude your surface down if you want to make it into a editable kind of poly surface as well or a 3D shape. Um, I often do this because it is a lot easier to work with if you want to kind of cut bits out of your landscape and I'd usually just remove the bottom just by making a large box here and just using the boolean difference command just to remove the bottom part of that so we've got a kind of slab we can work with for that terrain. I usually also keep my terrain lines in there as well and the reason for this is it might be that when you go to turn this into an editable drawing let's kind of do two options one with and one without 
it's quite useful keeping those terrain lines in. You might want to trim off the edges there, but what happens is if I want to turn these into kind of 2D drawings, with the terrain lines in place, and I'm just going to use the make 2D function to make a 2D drawing from these models. With those terrain lines in place, if I go and have a look at the outcome of these, you can see that it kind of gives you a bit more of the shape of the mountains. Now, the reason I've lost a few of these is they're actually hidden below the terrain. So let's just quickly do that again. And this time, instead of just doing it, what will happen is your contour lines will sit slightly below the surface of your object sometimes. So if you just slightly move it down, just so they're sitting proud like that, it shouldn't affect your model too much. And then let's pick a view. I'll choose a kind of angle from here, let's say. Make 2D. You can now see we're getting kind of our contour lines on our object there, which kind of gives us a definition on our mountainside. So it's quite useful to keep those just if you want to build that into your drawing at a later date. Um, obviously with these I trim off the edges and I might add a few more in this kind of basin part as well. And you probably want to change the line weight of those, but we'll kind of look at that in a separate video. So that was just a quick tutorial video on how to take a mesh from SketchUp and turn it into something more editable and usable in Rhino and tidy it up. Um, and you get left with this sort of smooth poly surface that you can then use to sort of cut out pieces of your landscape or work into within Rhino. So I hope that was helpful and please look at the other videos if you want any more tutorials on 2D or 3D Rhino or any rendering techniques as well. But thank you for watching.